As I said, Pastor Fettis is out of town this week, so we're pleased to have Pastor Vincent Osaga bring our, the Word of God to us this morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate God for the privilege of preaching his unchanging word. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Ferdis and Wendy for giving me this opportunity to assist them in their ministry. Uh, family of Faith, it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, now it is time for the word of God. The Bible says, for the word of God is alive and active. So let us examine it carefully. The title of our message, the formula for a joyful marriage, love and respect. If you have your Bible, please turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22, 25, and 33. If it is convenient for you, please stand for the reading of God's word. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22, 25, and 33. I read, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Verse 25, Husbands, Love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. 33. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Let's pray. <clears throat> Wonderful, gracious Father, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Help us not to lean on our own understanding. Give us the grace to follow the path you set before us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> As a practicing certified public accountant, it is not unusual for some of my clients to confide in me on several important life issues that are not related to taxes or accounting. On this given day, this client walked into my office and complained bitterly about his marriage and about his wife. Some of his comments were, women, you can't do with them, you can't do without them. They don't just get it. And he went on and on and on and on. By the way, uh, this is his second marriage. I listened to him carefully, and I responded. I said, I'm so sorry about your marriage experience. And I said, I can assure you the application of one Bible verse can drastically transform your marriage. I share with him Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. We say, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. In a few minutes, I explain the essence of this verse I told him. He objected to everything that I said. Some of his objections were, that is not our problem. That is beside the point. Then he went on and on and on and on again. When I realized that I was not getting anywhere with him, I stopped for a moment and I flipped the coin. 
And I said, if your wife was here, I would have loved to share with her verse 22 of the same chapter, which says, Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. In a few minutes, I summarized this verse to him. He responded positively to everything that I said. Some of his responses was, that is what I'm talking about. You hit the nail on the head. I wish my wife was here to listen to you. After he left my office, I shook my head. I said, truly, there are two types of people in this world. One people, these are people that have flaws, shortcomings, deficiency, and they are aware of some of them, and they pray that God will help them to overcome their deficiencies so that they can be a better spouse or a better sibling, however the case might be. Then you also have another group of people who also have flaws and deficiency, that they are completely clueless about their weaknesses, let alone pray about them. These are people that claim not to be perfect, but you will never hear these words from them, I am sorry. I'm wrong. Forgive me. You see, we all have issues. That is what the Bible said, not me. The Bible said that there is no one righteous, not even one. The Bible also said that if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So, what is the cause of our issues? They started in the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve disobeyed God and sinned against him. We are their descendants and as such we have the same DNA as Adam and Eve. We bring several issues into our marriage. Selfishness, pride, jealousy, envy, anger, the list goes on. When you bring two people, two imperfect people together, like the Bible said, to become one, and you expect them to live peacefully together for the rest of their lives, it is impossible without the help of God. On that note, the purpose of my message is to call our attention to the God's perfect formula for a joyful marriage, love and respect. And we're also going to talk about some of the related implementation strategies. Now, before we continue, let's take a quick look at the general context of our test and one general misconception about our subject matter. The book of Ephesians was written by Apostle Paul during his imprisonment in Rome. He wrote this book to this church in Ephesus and by extension to all believers everywhere. In this book, he encouraged these Christians in their faith and he also addressed several interpersonal relationship issues. Specifically, towards the end of chapter 5, he counseled husbands and wives on how to live together amicably. In verse 33, which is the last verse of the chapter, he called our attention to this awesome formula for a joyful uh, marriage. That said, let me go ahead and quickly share one misconception with you and the notion of the men as superior to women. That is untrue. From the beginning of time, man has dominated the world. We have used our power in almost every society, if not every society, to oppress women. However, oppressing women in any form, shape, or manner is not of God and is also inconsistent with, with the word of God. Both the Old and New Testament support this truth. In the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. In the New Testament, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28 says, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you all are all one in Christ Jesus. So God created us different. 
differently for, so that we can complement each other for different roles. But one is not less valuable than the other. Now, let's quickly take a look at our test. First, verse, chapter 5, verse 22 of Ephesians. He said, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Both Christians and not Christians who do not have a full understanding of this text respond negatively to the word submit. This test can easily be taken out of context if you really don't have an understanding of the whole of chapter 5 and perhaps the first half of chapter 6. Addressing the whole church at the beginning of chapter 5, Apostle Paul asked us to be imitators of God and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave his life for us, still addressing the whole church, specifically in verse 21. He asked us to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. In other words, he asked us to put others' interest above our own interest. He echoed the same thought in Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. He said, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking at your own interests, but each of you to the interest of the others. So, if you look at this whole chapter carefully, then from verse 22 through the end of chapter 5, the Apostle Paul shifted focus from 22 through 33, and he addressed specifically wives and husbands. Then at the beginning of chapter 6, he addressed parents and children, so on and so forth. So if you take a look at the totality of this chapter, you have a good understanding of what Apostle Paul meant when he said, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. So the question is, First of all, contrary to what some people believe, a wife submitting to her husband does not mean that she should be a doormat or a yes woman. Whatever the husband said, yes sir. That is not what the text is saying. A wife has the right to respectfully express her opinion, respectfully express her opinion to her husband and walk amicably with her husband as a valuable member of the team. <clears throat> so what does it mean for a wife to submit to a husband? For a wife to submit to a husband, it means that she should be under her husband. She should acknowledge her husband authority as a figurehead. She should acknowledge her husband leadership in the household. You ask, why? I'm glad that you did. Two reasons. Number one, because God says so, and that should be enough. But if you want additional explanation, number two. Number two is actually num not number two. It's, it is an addendum to number one. Please listen to me carefully. For any establishment, institution to work effectively, efficiently, smoothly, seamlessly, in harmony, there has to be one leader. In the country that the United States, there's only one president. You can't have five presidents. In every company of any size, there is only one CEO. For the universal church, Christ is the head. For our local church, our senior pastor is the head. That is the order of things. If otherwise is the case, it's a perfect recipe for chaos, disaster. So at home, God said, 
Husband, you are the head. You are the head of the household. There can't be two leaders at home. Otherwise, you have nothing but chaos. Additional points about this verse. He said, Why well, submit yourself to your own husbands? To your own husbands. Not somebody else's husband, but your own husband. That is important. And it also said, as you do to the Lord, meaning if you are a woman of God and you love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and you appreciate God, then you are not going to have any problem submitting to your husband as you submit to the Lord, since the Lord asks you to submit to him. Another important point. No one can force any woman to submit to her husband. It is purely voluntary. You do, you enjoy the benefit, you don't, you pay the price. Last point. There's one exception. Wives, there's one exception whereby you should not submit to your husband. It is not explicitly stated in the text. It is implied. And that is a wife should not submit to her husband on immoral ground. You should not submit to your husband if the issue is not biblical. That is the only exception. You know, a number of years ago, one of my nieces got married and she shared with me about the struggle that she was having with her marriage. She's a newlywed, about two, three years. And uh, when she talked to me, I see that there is a power struggle. And I shared this verse with her, and I said, listen, go home. And I explained this verse to her. Go home and submit to your husband. From this point on, don't argue with him. I said, listen to me, young one. I said, don't argue with your husband. Just express your opinion respectfully, number one. Number two, don't just submit to him. I want you to express in your own words that you are submitted to him. I said, use these words. Honey, you are in charge. Your say is final. Pray about this before you make the decision. Honey, I just want to let you know that it doesn't matter the outcome of your decision. Whatever decision you make, I will support you. And I coach her on those words to use. I said, six months, come back. And let me know what happened. In less than six months, she came back and said, Uncle, you're not going to believe this. This is magical. I used to get my way 40, 45% of the time. Now I'm getting my way 90, 95% of the time. <laughs> A submissive wife will get almost everything she wants. My, uh, by the grace of God, I've been married for... 33 wonderful years when, when, when uh, uh, some of you know that uh, I'm also a professor. Anytime I introduce myself at the beginning of the class, I introduce myself, and one of the things that I say that I, did, I don't tell them I'm married, I say I'm very happily married. And I'm sending a message to some women also. My wife, I don't know any other woman in this world that is as submissive as my wife. I tell people sometimes, I get more respect in my house than the president in the White House, and I really mean that. Similarly, I don't know any woman in this world that is as loved and adored and spoiled than my wife. <laughs> if, if you don't believe me, at the end of service, ask her. Now, husbands, our turn, let's zero in on verse 25. Verse 25 said, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. The key point here is husbands are to love their wives up to the extent of giving their lives up for her. This is a tall order. This is more involved than and the responsibility is more challenging than that of the wife. Watch this. The wife's mandate 
what God asked the wife to do is on verse 22. Apostle Paul explained verse 22 in 23 and 24. So he explained the wife's mandate in two verses. The husband mandate is on verse 25. He explains our mandate using seven verses to explain our mandate. So we have more uh, responsibility than the woman. This is not part of what I, uh, this is not part of my outline, and I'm going to deviate. I, I, I didn't mean to do this, but I'm going to deviate anyway. So this is a long sermon, so please bear with me. My wife and I went to Atlanta to visit a couple, my wife's cousin, husband and wife. They are about 10 years older than us. When we were in their house that weekend, coincidentally, another couple was also visiting with them. It's a big house, so we have plenty of rooms. So three couples, we went up spending the weekend together. We realized that the young couple, they were in their 20s, and they were about to get married. And because we were together, six couples over the weekend, we realized that they are getting married. And they just asked us to cancel them since they are getting married in a few months. I said, wow, that is nice. So we sat down and I said, listen, I can only cancel you based on what I know. My framework is the Bible. So I brought out the Bible and I said, I mean, you guys have the Bible in the house. I come to find out that they said, no, we don't have a Bible. They are not Christians. They don't believe. I said, you don't even have any Bible in your hands? They said, no. I said, do you have a Bible in your apps? They said, no. This is in the United States. You know, so, uh, so, so I asked the, our guest, our host, to help us with the Bible. So I brought the Bible. I asked the husband and the wife to read Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through 33. To make a long story short, they did. And I asked them, what do you think? I want you to read before I talk to you. Here is what the lady said. She said, one observation. When I read verse 22, I was very sad because of what God asked me to do as a wife. But when I read verses 25 through the end of the chapter, and that is the husband's responsibility, I was no longer sad because I feel so sorry for the husband. God is asking the husband to do way more than he's asking the wife to do. That, it takes some people a lot of studies to figure that out. She's a very smart lady. I think she has a master's degree in some complicated subject matter. She's very smart, so she picked it up. The Bible is very simple and complex at the same time. It was just amazing that she was able to dissect the Bible just like that. Somebody has not gone to church, no Bible. She got it. That the husband responsibilities are more involved. And I don't want to be the husband, she said. So, husbands, listen to our mandate. God designated us as the leader of our home. He's not referring to the leader that lost his over his subject. He's not talking about the leader that sits in the comfort of his living room with his remote control and asks everybody to serve him. God is not talking about that kind of leader. God is talking about a servant leader. A servant leader, a servant leader shares power. A servant leader sacrificially seek the comfort and joy of his subject. A servant leader put the interest of his subject above himself. That is what God is talking about. God is asking us husbands to be the servant leader. Jesus Christ is the perfect example of a servant leader. He came to serve and not to be served. Mark 10 45, for even the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That is the type of leader God wants to be. God wants us to be as a, as a husband. Verse 33. Three verses. One more to go. 
Verse 33 is the last verse of chapter 5. This verse sums up verses 22 through 32. He says, however, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. God revealed the depth, the importance of this verse to one man called Dr. Emerson Egrish. And this guy was inspired, and he wrote a book titled Love and respect and explain this verse further. It took him 300 plus pages to explain one verse. That tells you how powerful the word of God is. Then this guy decided to devote his whole life and devoted his ministry talking about the truth of this verse across the globe. Love. And respect. Hence the title of our message, the formula for a joyful marriage, love and respect. Now, with God, with God's help, I'm going to try to explain in less than 10 minutes what Dr. Egrich explained in 300 plus pages. So put on your seat belt and let's go. In summary, Dr. Egrich claims that most marriage conflicts are due to lack of love and respect. He looks at it as the love that she desires that she's not getting and the respect that he desperately needs that he's not getting. First, I want to address the wives. Wives, please listen to me carefully. You may not be aware of this. Because of the way God created us, I'm talking about men, we long for our wife's respect. We desire our wife's respect. We crave for our wife's respect. We want our wives to treat us, listen, as if we are the greatest, ideal, most wonderful man in the world, even though we know we are not. I don't know whether you got that. <laughs> A typical man wants his wife to reverence him, to look up to him, to appreciate him, to treat him as the greatest husband in the world even though he knows himself that is not. But that is what we crave for. How? Because that is our genetic makeup. That is how God created us. A man, a typical husband, wants to be treated like a prince or king in his own domain, in his own domain, in his own empire, even though that domain might be a rented studio apartment. Some of these young people don't know what is studio apartment. Do you? A studio apartment does not have a separate private room. It's just a studio with kitchen, bathroom, everything right there. Just like the hotel room. They're smaller than the hotel room. That is a studio apartment. A husband, a husband can be in a studio apartment with his wife and four children in that studio apartment. That is his domain. That is his empire. He still wants his wife to treat him as if he's the greatest man, he's the ideal man in the world. A man wants to be treated by his wife as if he's king, even though his domain might be the smallest house in a remote village without electricity or running water. It doesn't matter. He still wants to be treated as a king. A man wants to be treated as a king in his own domain, even though that domain might be a cave on top of the mountain or in the valley. It doesn't matter. A man wants to be treated as such because that is our genetic makeup. That is how God created us. It makes us feel good. We are ego-driven. 
And we want that ego to be fed, especially by our wives. That is the truth. That is how God made us. So wife, be careful how you relate to your husband. Dr. Edry said, you can be right and be wrong at the same time. When you scream on top of your voice and yell at your husband, you are being disrespectful. I know some of you don't scream like me. Even when you talk calmly, but you talk down on your husband in a condescending way, you are still disrespectful. If you make decision to override your husband's decision without his authorization, you are being disrespectful. When you compare your husband to any man in any form, shape, or manner, please don't do that. You are being disrespectful. That hurts. And, wife, and husband, say same to you. Don't compare your wife with any other wife. Right now, I'm just addressing wives. I'm coming for the husband. <laughs> now, there are no adequate words. There are no words to Explain how a husband feels when he is not respected by his wife. It is extremely difficult. Perhaps it takes double grace for a man to love a disrespectful wife. Doctor, Edry says that a man needs respect like he needs air. Just in case you didn't hear me, I have to spell it out. A I R. If you disrespect your husband, this is what you are doing. I can't breathe. A man needs respect like he needs air. And when you disrespect your husband, you are disobeying God who commanded you to obey him. Husbands, now our turn. Please listen to me carefully. A woman is different and special. And as such, her needs are special. By nature, a woman is affectionate, nurturing, loving. You notice that God did not ask a woman to love her husband. You know why? Because it comes natural for a woman to love her husband. It's just giving. That is just women. They love. They are nurturing. They are affectionate. I have a daughter and two boys. I just think my life would have been completely different without my daughter. It's just amazing how my daughter just takes care of me. Not that my boys don't care, but they are boys. I, I love my mother so much, and I have five sisters. I just take a look at how my sisters take care of my mother, even remotely, without being in the same country. It's just amazing. I just cough out the money. <laughs> so, so women, by nature, they are loving, they are caring. So God did not ask women to love their husband because he, he's giving. In contrast, by nature... Men are not nurturing. We are not loving. We are not affectionate. I'm not saying that we are not or we could not be. Just by nature, it is what it is. So that is why God commanded us to love our wives up to the extent of giving our lives for them. So this is a tall order. So how do we love our wives? How do we meet their physical and emotional needs? That is the $64,000 question. How do we love our wives? We love our wives in two primary ways. Number one, a husband needs to explicitly tell his wife that he loves her. Listen to me, husband. The notion that we don't have to express the fact that we love our wives all the time is a lie from the devil. Yes, you ask, how often should I express that? As often as you can. 
Let me share a true life story with you. Several years ago, my wife called my attention to the fact that I tend to repeat myself too much. When I listen to people that actually repeat themselves when they are speaking, I notice that it's very annoying. So over the years, I have learned not to repeat myself except when it is absolutely necessary. And I thank my lovely and beautiful wife for that. Watch this. I have a habit. This is not for everybody. But I have a habit of complimenting my wife every day. Yes, you heard me. Three 165 days a year. I praise and acknowledge her inner and physical beauty. I compliment her on her spiritual commitment, her hairdo, her makeup, her manicure, her pedicure, her dress, and you name it. I tell her how she makes me feel when she dresses up. Yes. Every single day. I also let my wife know that she's the most beautiful woman in the world. I say that often. Sometimes multiple times a day. That is the only time my wife does not accuse me of repeating myself. <laughs> so a woman can never get tired of those words. Another habit. I really don't spend enough time with my wife as I really would love to. And uh, I think I, I use the, the fact that I have two jobs as an excuse. I'm retiring from one of the jobs this summer, so I'm going to see how that goes. Uh, so but, uh, this time, there was the time I said to my wife, honey, I, I really need to work half day today. I will come home and spend the time with you. Uh, guess what? Something happened. I had an emergency at work, so I called her. I said, honey, I can't just make it. And I got home at 7 o'clock p.m. I was driving home. I was only feeling bad about myself. You know, when I got home, I said, hi, honey. He said, hi. Uh, I, it was obvious. You know, when you have those uh, uh, happy emoji face, then you also have emoji face. I don't want to be bothered. I'm not really happy right now. So I think I saw the emoji face of uh, I'm not a happy wife right now. I, I, I just noticed. So I said to my wife, I said, honey, you know, before I apologize for what happened today, I noticed that you have on this emoji face that I'm not a happy woman. But I just want to let you know that even with your upset emoji face, you are still the most beautiful woman in the world. And she couldn't even help herself. She laughed and put aside the upset emoji face and the happy emoji face. And then she went back to the upset, happy emoji face and said, I'm still mad at you. <laughs> so a woman can never get tired of this, hearing these words, I love you. You are so beautiful. Other than my salvation, you are the best thing that has ever happened to me. I cannot imagine life without you. I hope and I pray that I make the transition to glory before you. I tell that to my wife all the time because I don't want to be here on this planet Earth without my wife. I wait for her in heaven, not the other way around. Listen to me, a woman will never get tired of hearing these words. I can't imagine life without you. I love you so much. The list goes on. Everything, that's number one. Number two, how do we love our wives? Everything I said about verbal expression of love does not mean anything if a husband does not back it up with action. Love is a verb, but it is an action verb. So our Love for our wives must be demonstrated in a manner in which she understands. Our Heavenly Father did not just say, I love you. He demonstrated his love for us. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. Why we were still seen as Christ died for us. So our love has to be demonstrated for our... In his book, 
title, The Five Love Languages. Dr. Gary Chapman claims that there are five emotional love languages, five different ways people speak and understand love. Five different ways. Number one, affirmation, words of affirmation. Number two, quality time. Number three, receiving gifts. Number four, personal touch. And number five, act of service. I remember Dr. Gary Chasman, five love languages with this acronym, at GPS, like the GPS that you have in your car, right? Or yourself with GPS, at GPS, A-T-G-P-S. A, affirmation, T, time, G, gift, P, personal touch, and S, service. Every husband and wife should memorize this and add it out on a daily basis and be conscious of that. Remember, the wife, husband, I'm still talking to you. Remember, the wife ought to treat her husband as king. Remember, right? Right? If we are king by default, guess what? Our wives are what? Queens. Here is the problem that most of us have. I'm talking about husband. We don't have the kind of resources that King Charles of England or Prince William of England has. We don't have those kind of resources whereby they hire three or four maids to take care of their wife's needs. We don't have those kind of resources. Because we don't, those responsibilities are now on us to serve our wives. We are servant leader. I hate to digress again. You know, about 12 years ago or 13 years ago, I don't know what happened. My wife just dressed up and said, honey, I need you to tie my shoes. The first thing that came to my mind was, wait a minute, you can't tie your shoes? I didn't say that. But that just came to my mind. And then I remember Jesus Christ washing the feet of his disciple. Then I bent down and tied her shoes. Then all of a sudden, from that point on, interestingly, my wife doesn't tie her shoes anymore. Not when I'm there, she just said, you know, she doesn't even have to ask. I just bend down and tie her shoes. It's giving now. That is just part of service. And I actually love doing that now because I've been doing it for, what, 11, 12 years. She doesn't want to tie. Because she doesn't want to be inconvenienced tying her shoes. The servant leader is right here. Just tie my shoes. A wife needs affirmation of love through spoken words like she needs air. When we don't express our love for our wife literally and figuratively, she can't breathe, just like men. Husbands, for our wives, expressing our love is the equivalent of respect that we desire. Now, I'm closing. The last point. Dr. Edry said, husbands and wives need to be loved and respected. I repeat, husbands, wives need to be loved and respected. However, love is primary for wives, while respect is primary for husbands. That said, here is the conclusion of the matter. <clears throat> 50% of all marriages in the United States wind up in divorce. Unfortunately, a significant percentage of the other 50 are not experiencing the full joy of marriage as designed by God. We have two options in our marriage journey. We either do it God's way or we do it our way. The choice is ours. Remember, as you make your bed, so you shall lie on it. I am a student of Dr. Gary Chapman, the author of Five Love Languages. My wife and I have read many of his books and we have attended several of his conferences. One compelling truth that we have gotten from this mighty man of God is the fact that there is no one marriage that is stagnant. Every marriage is either getting better or getting worse. 
Because of that, my wife and I have made the commitment to engage in one activity or another to enhance our marriage experience on a yearly basis. On that note, wives, wives, pray for God's grace to live out Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Husbands, pray for God's wisdom to live out Ephesians 5.25. Love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Together, together, let us glorify our heavenly Father with our marriage as we live out Ephesians 5.33. However, each and every one of you must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of marriage. We are grateful for our spouse. You have given us everything we need to have a wonderful and joyful marriage. Show us where we need to improve. Give us the grace to continue to express and receive love and respect from one another. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.